Hey y'all, so today's video is kind of going to be me answering a pretty simple question and giving a little bit of explanation to my answer, and it's going to be short and it's completely unscripted all that, so let's get into it. Basically what I've been asked, and I've been asked different ways by different people, is the Smith & Wesson Model 29 6.5 inch barrel blued. 44 Magnum, still cool, now that Clint Eastwood has kind of fallen from grace and decided to back Bloomberg, the anti-gun loser. And the answer to that in short is yes, the gun is still cool. Has it lost some of its iconicness? Of course it has, you know. Um, anytime any public figure uh, steps in it like he has, uh, anything associated with them will, of course, instantly become less valuable. So, of course, you're probably, you know, probably going to see demand for these drops slightly. But at the end of the day, this gun is still very cool. And as far as the movie series Dirty Harry is concerned, which most people um, associate this gun with, it's kind of a, do I still think they're cool movies? Yes, of course they're still cool movies. I've watched them plenty of times, and for me to sit and say, oh, well, now they're garbage, I'll never watch them again, is foolish. You know, they, they were good before, and again, they were filmed how many years ago, and they're not exactly going in and uh, changing the script around at this point. So, of course, they're still movies, and of course, I'll probably still watch them every once in a blue moon, Obviously not as often as I used to because, you know, Clint Eastwood isn't nearly as cool an actor anymore, at least not in my eyes. So as far as the gun still being cool, uh, yeah, it's still cool. Um, the thing to remember with this gun is this gun was around for several years before those series uh, ever started getting filmed. Um, you know, for anybody that knows the history of Elmer Keith and how this gun came to be, it's a very American story. Um... You know, in the famous line of this being the most powerful handgun in the world, well, at that time, it arguably was. And I know there's different things, people talking about different hand-loaded things and all that. Um, I won't get into that. But, you know, in general, it was the most powerful thing out there for the most part. And that's kind of cool and kind of American. You know, Elmer Keith really had been pushing and pushing and pushing to get a hot rod cartridge uh, worked up. And the whole story of how the 44 Magnum cartridge came to be is kind of cool. And with the Model 29 being the first production handgun to be chambered in that cartridge, again, that's a pretty cool story. It's a pretty cool uh, gun in its own. Now, obviously the movie series made this gun super famous because for anybody that, again, knows the history, and Forgotten Weapons did a really good video on uh, kind of the history of this gun and movie guns in general, for anybody that knows the history of it, uh, obviously Smith & Wesson wasn't cranking these out nonstop because back before it was an icon, it was a fairly heavy, fairly large uh, handgun that had a lot of recoil and only so many people needed a gun like that. It, it At the time before the movie series, it was a tool. It was a cool tool, but it was not a icon. Um, so basically this gun ramped forced smith to ramp up production of these and of course i believe in some states tripled the value of them on the uh, market but the gun is still cool even without that and to the people asking me am i going to sell this of course i'm not going to sell it it's still a very cool gun i still enjoy shooting it i enjoy hand, hand loading cartridges for it and i enjoy uh having a pretty cool piece of american history um, am I going to stand at the range and mutter to myself, go ahead, make my day? Probably not. And for anybody that thinks that's silly, I can guarantee you anybody that's fired one of these guns more than once has probably done that. And if you don't believe me, go watch uh, all the videos on YouTube. Trust me, if you've done it, you're either lying to yourself or you've done it. Um, but anyway, so... No, I don't, I don't think this gun is now worthless. I don't think this gun is stupid or silly or any, any other uh, versions of the questions I've been asked. 
Um, I just think it goes back to being a cool gun. I think, <laughs> I think if someone buys something of this value and of this size, I mean, these guns are obviously not cheap. Um, any, all you have to do is go look at the MSRP on the Smith and Wesson website to realize that, uh, these guns are not cheap, but anybody that spends that kind of money for the sole purpose of owning it because an actor walked around a set in California and uh, said some words and fired some blanks out of it, well, I think you're buying guns for the wrong reason. Um, but yeah, I still think it's a cool gun. I intend to keep it. Again, I don't think it's it's not as cool as it used to be in my eyes. I don't think it's... I don't even know if cool is the right word for it. It's just, um, I think it's gone down a few notches in, you know, if, if I had to list my favorite gun of all time, but I still think it's cool and I'm still going to enjoy it. And I'm still going to enjoy the fact that the Clint Eastwood series or the uh, Dirty Harry series was a good movie series. So <clears throat> that's my thoughts on everything. And I, uh, by all means, put down below what you think. If you think, uh, if you think the series, if you'll ever watch the movie series again, or if you uh, don't care or whatever, and uh, have a good day.